Anyway, Bonner Cohen is on the phone with me right now. He's probably thinking, what in the heck? How is she going to segue to me? I'm not going to segue, Bonner. I'm just going to say hi. I, I How are you? That would be a, a, a leap. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, you, I, I thought about trying to segue it, but you know, non-toxic, safe for pets, totally environmentally friendly. Speaking of the environment, here's our friend Bonner Cohen from the National <laughs> Center for Public Policy Research to talk about environmentalism. Ba bam. <laughs> oh, I've got something for you. Noah put out a report that was a real dog. How's that? It was. Oh, oh, oh. I, I don't have a. I don't. I can't give you a rim shot. I don't. I, I can give you the bell ding again. Yeah, Nicely, bell, done. We'll Nicely done. Nicely <laughs> done. Um, all right. Well, I, I do have you on the program to talk about more of the specifics of what happened um, with regard to the manipulated data that attempted to erase the pause in global warming. And this is a government agency that did this. Yes, this was done with taxpayers' money, and it was done by the National Oceanographic and and, uh, Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, which bills itself as the world's largest database on climate. Well, it turns out that some of the data uh, they have been putting out are absolutely phony. You talk about the fashionable term we hear now, fake news. Well, NOAA... Uh, was putting out fake news before fake news became fashionable. And what NOAA did is, in the run-up to the December 2015 Paris Climate Change uh, Conference, which is sponsored by the UN, suddenly a report uh, appeared calling into question, and indeed going beyond that, and refuting the notion that there had been a roughly 20-year pause in man-made global warming. Well, that caused quite a sensation, and the report was passed around in Paris as further evidence that urgent action was necessary to combat climate change. But lo and behold, it turns out that a NOAA scientist, now a whistleblower, a gentleman by the name of John Bates, tried at the time to tell higher-ups at NOAA that the data being used for the report were phony. The data being used for the land temperatures and the sea temperatures, both phony. The land temperature were based on uh, a, a data set that was flawed because there was a bug in the software that produced bad data. Now, NOAA knew about this and went ahead and put it out anyway. And the seawater temperatures that were measured, turns out, were measured next to water intakes on buoys, uh, which are artificially warmer, which are warmer and will give you a higher temperature than simply measuring the temperature of the seawater itself. So in both cases... And they know this. They know that the temperature is is too high. They knew all of this. But nevertheless, uh, they wanted to continue to beat the drum that urgent action needs to be taken on climate change. Therefore, they produced data uh, supporting that contention. They fake and now data. it turns out, 18 months later, uh, that all of that was completely phony from the very beginning. Now, why is that important? Well, it's important for a couple of reasons. First of all, <clears throat> this is a case of your government lying to you. This is an agency supported by U.S. taxpayers, which knew well that the data it were were putting out were false. Secondly, that false report that was put out was done to get uh, all countries in the world to uh, sign the Paris Climate Change Agreement. And sure enough, the Obama administration did just that. That obligates the United States... Uh, to cut its emissions of greenhouse gases drastically over the course of the next 10 or 15 years to combat the global warming uh, that uh, NOAA falsely uh, came up with, the figures supporting that. And, second, and, is it, and, and the, by the way, Bjorn Lomberg has done an analysis of this and estimated the cost of this treaty would be $100 trillion. And its effect on the climate <clears throat> Zero. Something you couldn't even measure. Think about that. So, so fake data 
So the Obama administration would have an excuse to sign on to the Paris Climate Agreement that would cost us $100 trillion in order to comply with all of it. And that agreement also includes the United States' quote-unquote contribution to a global green fund uh, that is a transfer for the United States of $3 billion of U.S. taxpayers' money to an assortment of third world potentates who are going to use that money to ready combat climate change in their countries. Now, what's going to happen is the money would change hands, of course. How much of that would go uh, to fight the climate or, or wind up in certain uh, bank accounts in the Cayman well, Islands? Well, of course or it would. Bonner, Bonner, <laughs> there, we, you, how do you fight the climate? I mean, fighting the climate, that's, <laughs> that's just right. an absurdity on its of face. Course. But. We, 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 we so, are told so, repeatedly we're going to combat climate que- change. Question. Who is, who is the one who made the decision to manipulate the data? Do we have uh, that answer? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Uh, because it was brought to the attention of the then head of NOAA, a gentleman by the name of John Carl, who's been around NOAA for a long, long time. It had been brought to his attention that the, that the data were false, and he uh, overruled the whistleblower who brought it to his attention and went ahead and put the put the uh, the data out anyway, so as to beat the drums even louder for U.S. participation in the Paris Climate Change Agreement. So yes, we know exactly who the bad actor was. All right, so we know that it is this guy John Carl, and he was what the director of NOAA. That's right. Do it we have any information one. over you know why somebody who is the director of ostensibly a science agency would have made a decision to ignore science to accept fraudulent data, fraudulent data? Um, it, do we know that if there there was something somebody pulling his strings, is has Congress investigated this to get to the bottom of it? Uh, Congress, I think, is going to uh, uh, investigate this because this just came to light a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but most certainly, what you have here, and this is, we would like to think this is an isolated incident, but unfortunately, it's not. We know about uh, climate gate. That was, an, I mean, that was manipulated. Gate, exactly. A government agencies manipulate science and manipulate data all the time because these agencies have agendas. And uh, true to uh, the wishes of the Obama administration, which, after all, had to make the case for the United States cutting its emissions of greenhouse gases, which really means raising the price of electricity for every man, woman, and child in the United States, uh, and, and is a continuation of its war on fossil fuels, natural gas, oil, and coal. They needed they needed the justification, and bingo, Noah came up with it. Mm. Now, um, so Trump, n- nobody's heads have rolled yet. No, no. Uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Carl has, uh, has departed Noah. Uh, but I certainly hope that a con- uh, congressional investigation will ensue. And now Donald Trump has yet another reason to withdraw the United States from the Paris Climate Change Agreement. He said during the campaign repeatedly he would do so. He did that before uh, the news came out that the data on which the NOAA report was based were, were false. So Mr. Trump now has another reason walk away from this nonsense. Yeah, it's, I mean, because we were, we signed that, you you could argue, the United States signed that under false pretenses. Now, Barack exactly Obama, right. the idea that Barack Obama had no hand in in trying to, to demand manipulated data to prove that there was no pause in global warming, you know, fake data, um, you know, I think that's absurd to think that he didn't, you know, have any hand in that whatsoever. Oh, yeah, but but he could plausibly say, I was, Obama. you know, Trump could plausibly say, President Obama was led to sign that agreement under false pretenses, <laughs> right, you know, exactly. <laughs> because it was. I mean, we're talking. This is the second time a major science agency in the United States has faked data, faked it. You know, ClimateGate first, and now this. I mean, that calls into question whether you know whether we should not do full, you know, full on uh, audits. Of all of these agencies to find out who else, you know, what what other lies have been told? What other manipulated pieces of information Uh, have we been peddled in the name of science uh, and policy has been made? Yeah. Are we really supposed to believe that this was an isolated incident? Oh, well, of course not, because it's the nature of the beast. Once you give uh, agencies power, don't be surprised if agencies use that power. And uh, for NOAA, the scarier the scenario, 
the, the larger they can just uh, the larger budget they can justify asking for, and because NOAA, a uh, once relatively obscure and and for that matter right. respectable agency, has now become a propaganda arm for the whole green movement and for the all the global scare on on the. What used to be known as global warming, which Tra- is now called climate change. And trading on their reputation as right. just nothing but a numbers archive for all That's intents exactly, and purposes. Exactly right. We're just a numbers archive. No, you're not. Just like, you know, the, the CDC did the same thing. I, I always call them the once vaunted CDC. Yes, uh, and now no I'm going to call, I'm going to re- refer to Noah as the once vaunted Noah. <laughs> That's who, right. they, they've all been, you know, uh, uh, I guess, um, you know, hijacked by the political interests of the left and the moneyed in the money interests of lobbyists who stand to benefit if we're dumb enough to sacrifice a hundred trillion dollars in economic output to try to meet the dem- the, the unmeetable demands of, of of a treaty in the name of something scientists can't be certain exists. Yes, exactly. And you ask yourself, well, qui bono? Well, in addition to the bureaucrats whose budgets would, would become larger, you you have the purveyors of renewable energy, primarily wind and solar, who would immediately step forward as alternatives to these horrible fossil fuels which are overheating the planet. That's that's the narrative. And so these people would stand to benefit greatly from all of this, and uh, it is no coincidence that they are enthusiastic supporters. Just go to the websites of uh, the, the, the lobbyists for... Uh, wind energy and solar energy, and you will see uh, the company line that fossil fuels are the most reliable and affordable source of energy that we have, and something that the United States has in an incredible abundance, uh, that we have all of this, that must be taken away now and substituted by wind and solar, which are both unreliable, intermittent, and unaffordable. Yeah, unreliable, intermittent. And unaffordable. Again, I always love to remind people that the that the subsidy per megawatt hour for solar is seven hundred seventy five dollars, and the same quote subsidy for coal is sixty four cents. Yes. Uh-huh. So okay, Bonner Cohen, thank you for being on the program today. Good to have you on the show. Well, thank you very much for having me. All right, we'll take a quick break here and be right back. That was Bonner Cohen from the National Center for Public Policy Research. I'll be right back.